Yes, what is it, Ellen? Mr. Pearson from Southeast Asian Operations is returning your call, Ms. Crenshaw. Put him on screen. Merry Crenshaw, Ms. Christmas. Merry Christmas, Ms. Crenshaw. Let's cut to the chase, shall we, Mr. Pearson? Have you solved that workers' dispute in the Philippines yet? Oh, well, that's a complicated issue. Yes or no will suffice. Well, no, but... The time for excuses is past, Mr. Pearson. That strike is slowing down production throughout the company. The workers can barely survive on the wages they make. They simply... I pay them more than I should. Do you know what the average wage was there before I moved in? Do you? 73 cents an hour. I pay them more than twice that. As it is, I can barely generate a 32.6% profit in that plant because of my generosity. They're lucky to have jobs at all. And uh, just whose side are you on, anyway? Well, yours, of course. And are you dissatisfied with your salary? No, Ms. Crenshaw. Fine. I'll use the money I save by firing you to increase the workers' pay. Now let me speak to your replacement, Mr. Bishop. Uh, he's not here. What? It's the middle of the morning there. Yes, well, it's Christmas Day here. Fine. You tell Mr. Bishop he had better phone me first thing tomorrow or he can pack his bags as well. Ellen, get in here. Yes, Miss Crenshaw. Now, Ellen. Yes, Miss Crenshaw. It'll be just a moment. Miss Crenshaw, Close there's a... the door. Yes, Miss Crenshaw. Sit. Yes, Miss Crenshaw. There's been a problem in the Philippines plant. I'll be making some personnel changes there right away. I'll need you here after the holiday. You mean Monday? No, I mean this Thursday. I can't let you have the extra time off. But, but I, you promised. I said I'd consider it. If I had my way, you'd be in tomorrow. But I can't force you to work on a national holiday. However, it would be a great help to me if you would reconsider it. Miss Crenshaw, I'm sorry, but I will not work Christmas Day. As I said, I can't force you. I have a family. And I have a responsibility to the stockholders of this company. I'm not saying you should abandon your family, but you have to start thinking about your career. I, I'm not threatening your job. You're a competent worker. But you certainly seem to lack the drive and ambition it takes to succeed in this hostile business world, especially as a woman. If you want to make it in this corporate rat race, You'll have to learn the secrets of the trade. You'll never get ahead by wearing high heels and lace. Don't forget it was by men the rules were made. So it's she who wears the pants who makes the grade. It's a man's world, that's the one thing to remember. You're gonna have to learn to play the game. You gotta take Competition, work it twice as hard as the other guys. Find it twice as mean, and you'll fulfill your mission. The victory's twice as sweet, cause it's men we get to meet. Yes, it's a man's world, so forget about your gender. You'll reach the top in What is it? 
Carol, darling, did you forget about me? It's Ms. Veronique. Veronique? When did she get here? Just before I came in, I tried oh, to... Oh, never mind excuses. We'll need just a minute more, Veronique. Well, just a moment then. My time is very valuable. <sighs> what a time for her to show up. She's my spiritual advisor, if you must know. It's not that I believe in it myself. I'm just covering the basis. I'm sure you disapprove. I know you're religious. But that's none of your concern. What I need to know from you now is uh, your availability tomorrow. Can I let you know at the end of the day? I suppose. Now, I need you to fax a memo to Mr. Pearson's replacement. I want to remind him who he's working for. Yes, Miss Crenshaw. Let's see. What does the future hold in store for our dear Miss Crenshaw? Oh, what's this? Meeting with Haywood. I smell merger. Or hostile takeover, perhaps. I'll just have to pay dear little Stewie Haywood a call. <laughs> Dear Mr. Haywood, I have seen a vision. There could be trouble around the bend. Before you render any rash decision, you should consult your psych friend. Fortunately, that would be me. Barony, are you pondering the scheme? That would be every corporate raider's dream. I can tell the wheels are turning in that busy little brain. Could it be that you seek monetary gain? I admit, when envisioning the future, I've no ability to see beyond my nose. But the powers that I lack are made up for by my knack for manipulating corporate CEOs. Is this a con? Oh, do go on. I simply tell them what they want to hear, play upon their deepest fears, whisper secrets in their ear to guide them. It's easier than stealing baby's candy. I just keep a stellar explanation handy. It's written in the stars, your moon will take you far. The alignment of your sign and mug are dandy. I keep them in my sights, and when the time is right, I'll tell them what they want to hear. Veronique, I can see that you're a genius, but I don't think that you're telling all you know. I still don't understand how your orchestrating hand will serve to fill your bank account with dough. You'd like to hear? Of course, my dear. I buy a little stock, keep it under lock. Then after they announce the merge, I put it on the block. And when the Wall Street bulls go on a rampage, the market shift will work to my advantage. A hundred grand drops in my hand. <laughs> what they need to know and wait a couple weeks or so and walk in to collect my dough and cash in. So if you're planning any large transaction, I will make sure that it meets my satisfaction. I'll pull a couple strings, mumble mystic things, then decide the perfect time to spring to action. I love my grand career. This will be my banner year. Because I'll tell them what they want to hear. Miss Crenshaw, we'll see you now. Well, thank you, darling. May the spirits of the holiday season be with you. Thank you. Oh, that poor, poor Ellen, such a lost soul, darling. 
You are doing well to guide her. I'm doing what I can. Oh, what tension in this room, darling. It's like static electricity sticking to everything. We must open a window. We're 32 stories up, well, I then don't... we'll just have to create our own current then, darling. The energy configuration in this room is simply abysmal. You must be so drained working in here. I'll have to get one of my environmental consultants to stop by. Fine. Veronique, some important business has come up, and I don't think You're no not meeting with that Sagittarius fellow again, are you? Mr. Haywood? That's the one. You wouldn't be meeting with him on a Wednesday, would you? Two weeks from tomorrow. Oh, that's much too soon. That's much too soon, darling. The moons of your house will be terribly out of order then. You simply must reschedule. You're not discussing anything of import, are you? A merger, a rather large Not one. another word, not another word. I don't know a thing about this business stuff. We'll have to consult our spirit guide, Maiser Clément, the great 18th century financier. You can tell him all about it. But I don't have the you time. You want a quick answer, you'll get the wrong answer. Now, darling, let's breathe. All right. <sighs> yes. Breathe with me, darling. <coughs> Deep breaths. <sighs> Mais Clément, we call out to you. Uh, excuse me, Carol Crenshaw? Ellen, I said no interruptions. Uh, sorry, sorry to bother you, Miss Crenshaw. Ellen doesn't know I'm here. I'm. What? Are you supposed to be Monsieur Clément? Uh, no, my name is. Uh... My name is Edwin Wilkins. I'm with Doper the Department of Petitions and Treaties and Referendums, and... Um, Can't you see I'm in the middle of a meeting here? You can tell my secretary whatever it is you want. Now get out. Uh, yes, well, it's a rather personal matter. See, there's this work order concerning you. We've had an unusually large number of requests for a no-have intervention on your behalf. And a so, what intervention? Uh, sorry, office lingo. No-have. Nocturnal, heavenly, angelic visitation. Anyway, we were planning a no-have for you from last month, but we got kind of backlogged, so we had to reschedule for tonight. Sorry about the inconvenience with the holidays and all, you know, but... You know, you are making absolutely no sense. Would you get out now before I have to call security? Uh, yes, well, you'll need to sign this form um, before we can proceed with the no-have. No, no I said get out! Uh, yes, I'll just leave this here with you and... and now... Oh, Veronique, wake up! Veronique! Sorry to bother you again, Miss Crenshaw. You, you know, what is the meaning of this? I've told you that I haven't requested anything from you or your, your whatever it was. Uh, yes, well, the request didn't come from the intended recipient. It's all right here in the work order. Um, in accordance with Section 20, Paragraph 5, Part 16 of the ERC, the Eternal Revised Code, any righteous individual can make a request through the appropriate channels at the appropriate time whenever... This is nonsense. Would you let me speak to your manager? Oh, you mean the superintendent of petitions and treaties and referendums, the Soper Doper. Yeah, he's a super duper Soper Doper. <laughs> but um, as I was saying, we're, we're terribly backlogged at the moment, and your case has been assigned to me. I know, I know, I'm just a junior agent, but I assure you Ellen, that I have full authority and resources Ellen? to handle this situation. Hello, security. Hello. Hel Veronique? Snap out of it and help me get rid of this lunatic, Ver Veronique. Um, she can't hear you. I think she's on the wrong channel. <laughs> I'm sorry, but we've had to temporarily suspend external access. Would you mind explaining to me who you are in plain English? Yes, well, I'm an angel. You were expecting maybe Michael Landon? Did you have some sort of a message for me? Yes, we've planned to no have, and you'll be receiving some messengers of ours this evening. I see, I see. And the purpose of this visit? Well, uh, you are to examine the question where is your life headed? And is there anything else? Uh, let's see, you'll be receiving three messengers of ours. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Standard guidance and enlightenment clause. Nope, that seems to be about it. Well, fine. Thank you so much for your time. You betcha. Uh, you'll need to sign the, no, the, the work order before we can proceed with the no-have. And if you ever need anything at all, feel free to call our office at any time. 
Be sure to refer to work order number 437-9155. Of course. And you might want to ask your Ms. Veronique there who Mr. Haywood's spiritual advisor is. I'll be sure to do that. Thank you. Catch you later. Have a good evening. Bye bye Veronique! What? What well, kind of stunt was that? What is it, darling? I, well, I was having a little trouble connecting. Uh, what is it? I, I sense you're upset. Of course I'm upset. Some moron just broke into my office and you're telling me you had nothing to do with it? Well, darling, I, I didn't sense anything amiss. I, what happened? Nothing. It was just some prank. Well, perhaps maybe we should just finish up another time then. Fine, fine. Uh, Veronique. Yes, darling. You wouldn't happen to know who advises Mr. Haywood, would you? Well, how would I know who Stuart's advisor is? And how would you know his first name? <laughs> well, I'm sure that you've mentioned it before. I'm sure I didn't. <laughs> well, I know that I've always had a knack for sensing that kind of stuff, you know? Mm. I must be going now. Bye-bye. Ugh, of all the nonsense. Whew, all right, if I can't sleep, I'll just get work done. <clears throat> Ellen, this next memo is regarding the Financial Analysis Third Quarter Marketing Division. Send it to Carl Rosenberg. Note the 3% decline in European sales. I should also... Ugh. This blasted thing. Carol? Do you have an answer? Yes, Sister Margaret. The capital of Idaho is Boise. Incorrect. That was not the question. Weren't you paying attention, Carol? Uh, I must have dozed off for a minute. What are you doing here? I was assigned to you, of course. It says right here on the work order. Number 4379155, Carol Crenshaw. That's you, isn't it? Well, you should know it is. You, you were my fourth grade teacher. Well, I may look like her. Actually, I'm a manifestation, an apparition. It makes it easier for you to see a familiar image. So what you're saying is you're an angel too? An amvet, specifically. An angelic messenger visiting Earth temporarily. <laughs> this is insane. I don't understand any of it. Didn't you get a briefing from a doper agent? Well, I suppose someone did talk to me, but it didn't make any sense. Oh, it must have been one of the junior agents. Yes, Edwin. <laughs> he was supposed to have you sign a work order. Well, I didn't sign anything. Well, you can't have a know-how without a signed work order. Do you have your copy with you? I th think it's here someplace. Here it is. Are you going to sign it or not? Well, I don't even know what this is all about. I guess it is a little difficult to explain. Let me try to sum it up for you. You've messed up your life. <laughs> You're headed down a dangerous path. Your case has been remanded to Lacklock, the Bureau of Last Chances and <clears throat> Lost Causes. <laughs> Lacklock got a work order from Doper who sent it to BetDot for a no-have. Bet dot. That's my division. Been there, done that. <laughs> it's my job to show you the moments in your past that have most influenced your present status. You can't change the past, but you just might learn something from it. You have to be able to answer the question. The question? Where is your life headed? And just what is that supposed to mean? Exactly what it says. Can you tell where you're going? Do you figure that you're knowing what's ahead? Carol.
roll Can you see where you're headed? Are you sure you won't regret it when you're dead? Carol, have you spent some time examining your life or are you simply passing time? Do you know if you'll find happiness or strife? You'd better think ahead for peace of mind. So are you clued into your future? Are you certain it'll suit your final goal? Carol, have you thought about tomorrow? Are you filled with hope or sorrow in your soul? Carol, do you see the need to ponder your path before your journeys and draws near? Where is your life headed, Carol dear? Are you certain it'll suit your final goal? Carol, have you thought about tomorrow? Are you filled with hope or sorrow in your soul? Carol, do you see the need to ponder your path before your journey's end draws near? Are you prone to introspection? Will you make the right connection? Do you think you'll pass inspection when it's time to reach perfection? Will you follow my suggestion and consider now this question? Where is your life? exactly where I'm headed, the top. I'm already the first woman CEO of a Fortune 500 company. Do you truly think that's the only way to measure success? You can't have done very well, or else I wouldn't be here. But I have enough explaining. I have a busy, busy schedule tonight. Are you going to sign it or not? What happens if I don't? <laughs> More paperwork. <laughs> Doper will have to send an agent to confirm that you're a Unirov, an uncooperative intended recipient of a visitation. <laughs> that form has to be signed in triplicate. Then your case gets sent back to Lacklock for review, and that will have you just swimming in forms. And then all you right, all right, all right. I'll sign. Just get this nonsense over with so I can be done with it. Sign here, initial there, and there, sign there, and sign there. <laughs> now, where's your VCR? It's right over there. Oh. I can't see a darn thing without my glasses. <laughs> oh, let's see. that like it was yesterday. I hated having to pretend I couldn't see his drinking problem. My mother never could stand up to him. Yes, and that's why you had to break off communication with your parents. We had a completely dysfunctional family. That's true. Here's another important moment. Mom, this is Harvard we're talking about here, and they've offered to pay half my tuition. Honey, we've been over this before. We can't afford an expensive school like that for you. You're already spending so much on Robert's vocational school, and he's going to be a breadwinner someday. Isn't that right, honey? Honey? <laughs> You're wasting your money. That's not the issue here, Carol. You can stay here and go to community college. You could become a nurse or a oh. secretary. You could find a husband and get married, raise a family. Isn't that right, Herbie? Herbie? That's right, you're not going off to school. 
It's not fair. You can't make me stay here. As soon as I'm 18, I can go wherever I want. Don't you raise your voice at your father. After all he's done for you, you should be grateful. Grateful to you? All you've done for me is yell at me and tell me no my entire life. You're gonna get smacked if you don't settle down. I hate you. I hate you all. Just stop. Just stop. That was the worst day of my life. It must have been terrible. It was obvious. I had to leave. Of course, dear. Oh, don't be condescending. I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to say I should have done what I was told. You're just like Ellen, you religious fanatics. I've I said no such thing. Well, I would have done it all again in a heartbeat. I don't have a single regret in my life. And, and you, or your sister Margaret, I guess, was one of the reasons I left anyway. She told me I had potential. She taught me I could be something. Yes, she did. But where did you learn to be ruthless, arrogant, oppressive, merciless? Sister Margaret did not teach you such things. No, I picked those up along the way. Survival skills. You have no idea what it's like being a, a woman. A woman in a man's world. Yes. I have one more moment to show you. Will you watch? Do I have a choice? Your entire life is a choice. Go ahead, I suppose. Hi, honey. Any problems with the sitter? No problems. And how was work? Pretty slow. Everyone cut out early for Christmas. How about you? Carol? I got the promotion. Oh, honey, that's terrific. I can't believe, well, I can believe it, but oh, you deserve it, Mr. General Manager. So, is this effective immediately? Almost. I have to go for a little training at the home office first. So, how long? A couple of weeks? A little longer. Well, how long? Six months. Six months? Carol, how's that supposed to work? We'll just have to make it work. Jason starts kindergarten next year, and this is the time he needs you here the most. And Jennifer's only seven. Eight. I know it's not the perfect time, but it's the time that it is. Doug, you know this is a test by the company. They're very reluctant to advance women. We've been hoping for this for a long time. You know if it were you, I'd do the same thing. Yeah, I suppose. It's only for six months. Then I'll be back and everything will be normal again. Yeah? We'll hire a nanny to help with the kids. I'll be home most every weekend. Yeah, you're right. It'll be fine. It's only six months. But it wasn't just six months. One of the VPs at the home office had a heart attack. They needed a temporary replacement. I was there. And then? Then they offered me the job. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking I sacrificed my family and my marriage for my career. We were having problems long before I ever left. We thought having kids might help, but it didn't. I never was much of a mother. And now, well, his second wife is very good for them. Joanne is really their mother. They're much better off this way, okay? Okay, so stop condemning me. My dear child, I have never condemned you. I am only here to remind you of the pivotal moments in your life. There will be others after me to help you understand the rest. You need to get some sleep now. You have a long night ahead of you. pants off of me. Who are you? You know, they warned me you're kind of slow to catch on to this no hab bit. I thought you were one of those corporate big shot know-it-alls. You're an angel. Uh, an am vet. Name's Babs. Barbara, really, but nobody calls me that. Oh, now look. You made me miss the part where Clarence gets his wings. <laughs> that part always makes me cry. Oh, well. You know, this is real theater butter 
style. I love this stuff. I help myself. I hope you don't mind. You want some? What I want is for you to leave me alone. Hey, look, it isn't much fun for me either, you know, having to schlep around looking like, like this. Would you just leave my house? It was just a little popcorn, and besides, you wouldn't want to miss the rest of the This Is Your Life tour now, would ya? I must be going insane. Oh, look, I can understand this being unsettling at all. Just sit down here, take a deep breath, and relax, and I'll explain it all to you again. Now, you understand all this stuff about Doper getting Lacklock to send an AMVET from BetDot for a no-have, right? I suppose. Well, I'm from Handy, the Here and Now division, and I'm going to give you the scoop on your present condition. And later on, you'll get a visit from the folks at Popoff, predictions and possible outcomes for the future. You people have more acronyms than the government. <laughs> well, honey, you should try running the universe sometime. <laughs> you know, I've been thinking about all this angel, <laughs> no-have stuff. If this is real, it's my guess that you people have come to me to get my administrative advice on making things work better. You know, running a tighter ship. Oh, lady, please. The God of the universe, the maker of all of heaven and earth, don't need no advice from Carol Crenshaw. <laughs> so why is God bothering me then? Because he loves you. Well, and because we've been pestered to death about you. This is a double 18 operation from the Eternal Revised Code. Uh, that would be the uh, New Testament to you. First book, 8th chapter, 18th verse. You know, if anything is loosed here on earth, it will be loosed in heaven. Uh, what do you mean loosed on the earth? I didn't lose anything. Oh, prayers, honey, prayers from all over. We felt obligated to do something. Although, uh, if you ask me, this is probably the most hopeless case I've seen yet. Well, what prayers? What are you talking about? Well, here, let me show you. Is this going to be another one of those videos? Oh, no, it's cable. <laughs> it's kind of a cross between the Discovery Channel and lifestyles of the lost and hopeless. OK, here we go. Oh, that's Ellen. She is a hopeless case. I thought I'd be able to mentor her, help her get ahead, but she's just too weak, no drive to succeed. Service was beautiful tonight. Yeah. Sweetheart, you can't let her get to you. I know, but it's just not fair. She's ruining our holiday. You'll get to see the kids open their presents before you leave, and you'll be home before Christmas dinner. She just makes me so mad. I could just punch her in the nose sometimes. This coming from the woman who has everyone we know praying for your boss? You know what she said to me today? She called me a competent worker. Six years I've been with her. That's twice as long as anyone else, and it's probably the nicest thing I've ever heard her say about anybody. Uh, I can't imagine what it'd be like. I don't like giving people too many compliments. It makes them lazy and complacent. Sounds like somebody's not asleep yet. I'll go up and check on it. All right. That sounded like it came from my bedroom. Well, hello there, little Miss Chris. What are you still doing up? Can't sleep. You better. You know what tomorrow is, don't you? Christmas! That's right. And what do we celebrate on Christmas? Opening presents. And why do we give each other presents, silly? Because God gave us Jesus. That's right. Jesus gave himself to us so that we could love each, to show us how to love each other. So we could get presents. Something like that. Now you go to sleep. You'll understand it better when you're older. I hope I do. Such a simple story. Even a child could understand. Yet I've spent my whole life trying to know the child. Like the man. Such a simple message. Die to self and you will live. Yet so many times I lack the strength to love, the heart to give. It's 
so hard to love your enemies and turn the other cheek when this rage inside me tells me I should fight. So instead I sit in silence, I'm condemned for being weak. It's so unfair, I have my rights. Then I think about my Savior. He had the right to crush us all. Yet he chose instead to sacrifice himself to leave the call. I am called to go to battle as a soldier in the field, yet the weapons that I'm given are not made of sharpened steel. It's a battle of the spirit fought with prayer, faith, and love, empowered by grace from God above. There's more to see. All right, so you have Brad. So that's my ex-husband and Teresa his family. Neal, and then Colin our children. Okay. I haven't seen them in a while. Oh, 57. 57? That's 10 more than last year. We're just not going to be able to fit all these people in here. We're just going to have to cut the list somewhere. Jason, how many did you invite? Same as last year. Okay, fine. Jen? Six. And I'm not cutting a single one. We haven't seen each other all Christmas break. Okay, fine. We'll just have to make room for everybody. You should take her off the list. She doesn't ever come anyway. Now, Jen, you know your mother is always she welcome. She is not my mother. She's just some lady who had her secretary send me birthday cards and Christmas presents every year. She did offer to pay for college next year. Right. As long as I do what she wants, I am not sitting business. I'm sitting theater and music. Next year, she promised to give me a forerunner. Uh, we'll discuss that later. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm not going to bribed. I remember what she did. I remember when she left. Oh, honey, honey, I know that you're hurt, but you're just gonna have to learn how to forgive or it's gonna tear you up inside. All we can do for her right now is just to love her and to pray for her. I know that your mother... She is, is not my mother. Why do you keep calling her that? I hate her and I will never forgive her. She can drop dead. Oh, honey. She smelled when she held me in her arms and told the monster in my room to go away. I remember how she laughed when I sang my little song and told me how I'd be a movie star someday. I remember when she said she had to go for just a little while. She promised me she'd come home soon, cross my heart, hope to die. I feel her arms again. I remember asking daddy, is it going to be today? Then I'd swear I'd see her coming round the bend. I remember when he finally said she's never coming home. But she promised me she'd come home soon. Cross my heart, hope to die.
all right. I admit I've made some mistakes. But you people aren't showing the whole picture. What about the foundation that I'm forming? It'll do far more good than any harm I might have caused along the way. Carol, you're missing the point here. God doesn't want your money. He wants you. Listen, I've got this other appointment that I've got to keep, and I was just kind of wondering if maybe it just might... Oh, go ahead and take it. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> hey, listen, those pop-off reps will be here any minute now. Let me warn you in advance, these guys are a little more than strange, so you might want to catch some Z's before they come. I'm sure that I won't be able to sleep a wink. Good grief, it's freezing in here. The furnace must be... What's that? Is that in my imagination? That breeze, is there a window open? Carol! Carol, dear. Who's there? Would you like to know the future? Like to have your fortunes told? Would you like to see a glimpse of what you'll be like when you're old? To understand the future, we must analyze the past and see what path was followed till the present saw you last. And then we draw a line from the remote up to the near to show your life's direction, then extrapolate from here. We can see which way you're headed, so we see which way you'll go. We can share with you our findings. If you'd like, just let us know. I don't know. I'm scared. I can't bear to see the future, but I must know. Behold, here's the future as it currently appears. We show you now the way you'll likely end your earthly years. Ladies and gentlemen, shall we get started? We have a full agenda. Top of the list, of course, is the issue of our esteemed president and CEO, Ms. Carol Crenshaw. As you all know by now, Ms. Crenshaw died suddenly last week while discussing the profit trends with this board. She died the wealthiest individual, man or woman, of the United States. And after creating a small trust fund for her children, she established with the remainder of her untold millions, the Crenshaw Foundation dedicated to the advancement of the status of women in the business world. You see, my life was worthwhile after all. We are now going to unveil our tribute to Ms. Crenshaw, a portrait which will hang in this boardroom in perpetuity. today to honor Carol Crenshaw as this company's most recent CEO. So I'd like to take this moment to be the first to say how deep my feelings for Miss Crenshaw go. Three cheers for Carol Crenshaw. It's hard for me to know just what to say. So I offer up this gift in lieu of speeches. I wanted to make a point of thanking her today. Mr. Pearson, come on up. As the first employee fired by Ms. Crenshaw, I will try and put my pride upon the shelf and make my contribution to this tribute. Now let me take a shot at thanking her myself. Mr. Haywood, you had a few words you wanted to say. When she stole away my business in a merger, 
Her ruthlessness inspired me the most So to show you that I harbor no hard feelings I gladly take this chance to offer up this toast <laughs> We cheer for Carol Crenshaw The sentiments we show today are real And now that dear Miss Crenshaw has left us all for good We wanted to make it a point to show her how we feel Three cheers for Carol Crenshaw The sentiments we show today are real You were the eggs in exclamation and the cream of the crop You were the apple of my eye and were as sweet as soda pop You were the icing on the cake with a cherry on top Christmas morning. Okay. Okay. All right. Just get a hold of yourself, Carol. It was all just a crazy dream. That's it. It was just... Oh. How could you do this? How could you be so cruel? All my life you've denied me. At least before I believed I could become something. But now you suddenly appear with this sideshow just to prove to me how awful my life is and how empty it is. And then you, you just leave me? You just, you just leave? My dear child, I have never condemned you. I am only here to remind you of the pivotal moments in your life. Prayers, honey, prayers, from all over. Then why do we give each other presents, silly? Because God gave us Jesus. God doesn't want your money, Carol. He wants you. Be in peace, our dearest Carol, if you've listened to us well. The story of your life will be much happier to tell. Can it be true? Is there a chance that you can Ellen, Ellen, it's Carol. 
I'm going to be out of town for a few days and I won't need you till Monday. Oh, everything's going to be fine, I think. Merry Christmas, Ellen. Um, hi. Hello, Jennifer. Did you want to drop off some presents or something? <laughs> Sorry, I didn't bring any presents. Just me. Did you want to talk to Dad then? Actually, I came to see you mostly. I, uh, I hear you're still singing and you want to be an actress. Yeah, something like that. Well, you have such a lovely voice. I, I hope it'll take you far. Of course, it's always good to have a real profession to fall Is back on. Is that why you came? Listen to me lecturing. No, that's, that's not why I came. Then why did you come? I know that I can never make up for what happened in the past, but I was hoping that, um, that we could make the most of the time we have left. It won't be easy, I know. I have a lot of changes to make, but I'm willing to try. I don't know what to say. Perhaps this wasn't such a good idea. I, uh, I really just came to say, I'm sorry. Merry Christmas, Jenny. Merry Christmas. Carol. Mom. Do you want to come inside? There's food and stuff. I would love to come in, sweetheart. Come on. 